people talk about a bloated wage bill in the country. We're talking about a trillion shilling wage bill. You know, the current expenditure. Yes, which is what? A third of the budget? A third, but I'm going to change it at three points. In the three point chain and yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. change. One trillion. I mean, we, <laughs> million. nobody talks about millions anymore. And nowadays, yeah. uh, we just achieve this billions. Joining us live in the studio. Yes. She's just about to complete her term yeah. as the chairperson of the Salaries and, and Remuneration Commission. Can come on. Lynn Mengich, Thank you're looking you. lovely for someone who's worked six years under so much pressure. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're under pressure, Mingi. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of pressure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but I'm glad I served. When the critics turn around and say that the wage bill is what, a trillion shillings, that it's bloated, what do you say? You know the word bloated sometimes, you know, we, we may say bloated, but it's always good to look at the context you know of that what what really constitutes this wage bill yeah and what is driving the wage bill and and i want to say that if you look at the wage bill today yes it is a trillion mm -hmm. but do you know chef that actually 50 percent of that wage bill is actually for in, in the teaching sector just the the teachers and the universities uh, constitute 50 percent and that's where the problem is uh, the biggest problem yeah. i'm not sure then whether you call it a problem mm. because yeah. we have to accept that as a developing country mm. with a growing population then we've got an obligation to ensure that the essential services are provided mm education, healthcare, security. And if you look at the growth in the wage bill over the period, it has largely been in those sectors. So when we say 50% is actually teaching and universities, that uh, tells you, yeah. so, you know, so, so when we say bloated, it's always good to put that in context. But having said that, it is still a problem in the sense that our own regulations, the Public Finance Management Act, mm. stipulates that the wage bill should not be more than 35% of revenue. Right. Right. So to that extent, then, we are way off that target. Way over. We are over that target. So that is where then we can say, yes, there is a problem because then the ratio of wage bill to revenue is yeah. not where it should be. Mm. We abolish the plenary sitting allowances for parliament, for MCAs, you know, that, mm. that we did. Because remember, apart from, because they have a, a salary, uh -huh. but at the same time, they were being paid for plenary. So every time, you know, you... But again, for us, it's double compensation. The sector in you know, a receive the biggest chunk... Is education. In the education, and yet, yet it's the sector that is hurting almost oh, the most. Makes no well, sense. We're on a discussion. Yeah. Yes, I'm Gituku mm. on Citizen Television. Mm. We've got a very young population. Mm -hmm. Because of that, you will always, always, uh, you, you have to spend a lot of money in education. So where does this money go, which is 50% of the wage bill? It's actually going to teachers and university lecturers. And that is going to their salaries, nowhere else. Right. So, so so it's a factor of our own population. And we must so accept. So we uphold, in to, to, to uphold what we call family planning. To Naza Asana. To that, 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 that is not for me to say. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, I think for me to acknowledge that, yeah. um, you know, even a growing population mm -hmm. is a resource to a country. Mm -hmm. Your six-year tenure, what's it been like? What's been the most challenging thing? The biggest challenge really is you've got expectations from the civil, from the public officers. Let me say public officers because, that, you know, that, that encompasses everybody. Mm -hmm. Expectation of there is high cost of living, uh, eroding incomes, we expect a pay increase. Mm. And on the other side, you then look at the law that says the wage bill should not be more than 35, and you're way above that. So it is that balance, that balance between expectations vis-a-vis -vis what the country can actually afford, and, and therefore you're always in that s space of saying no yeah. to many people, and uh, they're not always going to be happy for, for, you know, when the commissions keep saying this can't happen, it can only happen to this level. What's been the best part for you? The first one, as I mentioned, is that the fact that actually the, the wage bill to revenue ratio came down. 
and we've seen that coming down. That's very satisfying that you're doing something, it is making a difference. That's from 50 to 40. 50, yeah, from 51 to 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to 40. Yes. Now, the other one is it's really about um, harmonization of pay addressing equity and fairness because historically before the commission there were many institutions that were setting pay advising on pay the other one is really getting the the trade unions and the employers to understand the role of slc in collective bargaining negotiations and it it took a lot of training sensitization we spend a lot of time just sensitizing the stakeholders on the role of the commission including developing a, a, a curriculum with the kenya school of government mm -hmm. to ensure that this is understood so that i must say has worked very very well you'll recall there is a time it was very common for a number of people say disband src disband src but we realized it was a lot of it was to misunderstanding on where does the commission come in. And we always got this message that, you know, I've signed a collective bargaining agreement with the employer, so we should just go ahead and agree. 